Okay, I, I want to challenge the belief uh, that, we're, that humans are that belief driven, that we could impose some legal policy or just um, tell people not to believe in God and their, their instincts for violence, their tendency towards jealousy and exclusiveness, all the anthropological scapegoating urges would just disappear. Well, nobody if we thinks could, that. I certainly, well, I mean, well, if I'm, you know, um, I'm one of the representative atheists here, I, I don't know any atheist who thinks that. Yeah. Well, no, but what you're arguing is that if we can change or we can attack a, a certain belief system, or as you were saying, if we can just understand, you know, I mean, you were saying that humorously about the limbic system, but I, what I'm challenging is simply the idea that, that faith or belief is this kind of intellectual or cognitive construct that's put on top of emotional um, urges that, you know, that it can therefore, um, in the case of religion, it can take violent tendencies and suddenly put them first. And I'm saying that, that as, as, as Michael was saying, that's a, an abuse of religion. And one of the, the tasks of any human being, religious or atheist or agnostic, is to find some sort of orderly hierarchy within themselves among their emotions, my tendency for love, my need to belong. Um, my desire for control and knowledge. But, but what about the desire that you have to be more right than everybody else? Or that one might have, not you personally, well, but I mean, that's, that's my not problem. profoundly anti-religious No, impulse. I'm saying my spiritual. It's a, that's a, an anti-religious impulse? Oh, yes. Yeah. Milton, for example, who was one of Christianity's greatest commentators, identified the tendency to presume omniscience without cause with Satan. And that, like, that's, a, that's a, as close to a theological fact as you might obtain. It's a, entirely what Paradise and Lost so is about. And so is the about. quotation from the gospel with which I started. If you don't believe, and that means believe what my sect believes, you are damned to hell That forever. isn't what that means. Oh. It <laughs> means what I, what does it, mean? it means I, what I, I said I at the beginning. I knew you could interpret it. Tennis it's not without an interpret a net. It's Go not ahead. an interpretation. Shoot it around. It's an understanding. What it, it means something more sophisticated. It means that if you don't believe in the two things that I described at the beginning, which is the essential goodness of being and the worthwhileness of humanity, that your life will take such a vicious turn that the place that you end up in, in will be fundamentally indistinguishable from hell. And that's happened in Look, our culture. That's a very clever over. interpretation. It's but not clever. Historically, it has nothing to do with the reality of people's beliefs. The no, two beliefs that you describe, they're essential beliefs of the Enlightenment, of the no, atheist No, they're not. They're, they're, they're derived directly from the Sermon on the Mount. And in fact, oh, Dawkins man. himself, Lots of people could have this is so funny. Big, you know. and, so, and so it was very clever <laughs> of Plato and Aristotle to be able to divine them ahead of time without having read the Sermon on the Mount. Can I say and something? And Confucius I'm, I'm to do the same. I'm jealous of both of your students. This is good stuff. <laughs> your classes must be good. I want to revisit a, something we started a while ago and come back to it. Michael Higgins with you. I'm guessing that you are a religious person today because once upon a time, your parents took you to church or something like that, and that's how you... Am I right or am I wrong here? And that's how you got into it? <laughs> well, it's not like developing a taste for pablum. Uh, you know. <laughs> but you didn't, no, but uh, no, you're right. You're, you're born into a context, right? Right. And you're born into a tradition. In the same way that our friend from Brooklyn was born into a different context, the context of nothingness, yeah, as but she likes it's, to call it's, it. It's, yeah, but let me, let me just explain it a little more, Steve, because um, uh, yes, I was born in Toronto, born into a Catholic family of varying levels of belief uh, and, and conviction and practice uh, in the 1950s. So um, it was a relatively cohesive Catholic world and everything was fairly clearly defined, something that would change utterly from 1962 to 65 with the Second Vatican Council. Now, do I remain a Catholic because that's how I came into the world and that's the family and the values that shaped me? By no means. Every person of faith, whether Catholic, uh, I, would, I would presume this is true of any person of faith, begins a serious process of mature uh, appropriation of that faith. You make decisions about why you continue to believe, but what context the layers of, sure. of faith. So I, I find it very difficult myself you know, to conceive of, and this is why I would have strong objections to the Quebec system, because it seems to me what you're do, doing there is you're offering nothing. 
faith and growth and important things don't happen uh, in vacuo. You set up a, a, a tradition, a tradition of meaning, value, symbol, discourse, everything, and then you move out of that. You may repudiate it. You enter into dialogue with it. You critique it. You find alternatives. But to just pr present people with a tabula rasa doesn't seem to me, in the end, to be genuinely fair. So I don't know where are you? you're over here now. So the, <laughs> <laughs> you're like the Holy Spirit. You move around. <laughs> They're moving all over the place. But, so let me wrap it up then <laughs> and you say. But in the end, it being being a Catholic it, for me isn't simply being born a Catholic. It's a it, in the end, it's an adult decision. We got lots of people who want to get in out here. Yes, ma'am, you wanted to say. Yes, I did. Um, I was brought up as a Christian scientist. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a Unitarian. What I want to say, and perhaps I'll direct my question particularly to Rob Buckman. Uh, Einstein had what he described as a cosmic religious sense. And he spent the latter part of his life trying to educate humanity for peace. Mm -hmm. My belief, whether it's a faith in God or otherwise, it's, it's what we do with our faith that makes the difference. And I feel myself that most of us should legitimately be ashamed of ourselves because we are not doing what we need to for humanity. Let me get Rob Buckman on that. Go ahead. I, I, I agree with you. Thank you. It's a very, very important point that what we, it's what we do with our faith that matters. You can't judge the faith by what is done or is not done. That is, of course, why I'm a, a, a humanist. It's a, it's, a, it's a funny word, but it actually means basically a congregational community of people who don't believe in a supernatural force. And, and I, I, Einstein was a greatest, one of the greatest thinkers of all time, that he did believe in, uh, as it were, the, the universe and the way it works. He did not believe in an intelligent design or a God in the sense of the, the way that many people, you know, I pray to God and he'll make it rain, I won't have to do the French test. So I think <laughs> how, we, how we behave in response to our faith is really important and we can cut the wire between uh, faith and bad, bad be destructive behavior. Over here, please. Yes, uh, I have a question about um, faith uh, for the same gentleman. Is it Mr. Buckman? Yeah, or Rob Buckman. Rob Buckman, yes. Um, I think what we're discussing here uh, in, a, in a circuitous way is uh, are human beings hardwired for religion like, and hardwired for faith? I mean, there are many things. There is no tabula rasa. I think, you know, if you look at yeah. science now, you can see we're, we're hardwired for many things. Are, in your opinion, are we hardwired for religious faith? Yes, absolutely we are. Um, it, it is one of the things that's made our species so successful. Thank you so much. Hardwired for faith is a way that this brain can cope with a completely arbitrary universe. And because this brain can do that, uh, our species became less anxious and less panicked by lightning and floods and so on. And we actually did well because we panicked less. And religion, uh, belief, at that, in that sense, was a, was a major feature of the human brain in its early evolution.